we're very happy to have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jiaxin Ying uh, today to give us a talk. And uh, Jiaxin got his uh, uh, a degree from a joint, actually you have a joint PhD, right, from the uh, Institute of Physics and also the University of Houston, working mostly with uh, Hong Ding and, uh, and uh, Su Hong Tan, mostly doing uh, scanning tunnel microscopy. And, and currently he's actually doing a postdoc with, uh, 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 with a, a STM person in the uh, Princeton, yeah. I guess uh, he, he will tell us today about the, the, his uh, recent work on tunneling into topological uh, materials. Yeah, okay, go ahead, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I will basically introduce some uh, recent experiments uh, for the STM study of topological materials as uh, Professor Dai has introduced. So my talk uh, includes uh, four parts. Uh, first part, I will briefly introduce uh, what is uh, emergent topological matter. And then I'll introduce uh, our STM technique. And uh, the main part is about to discuss some of the proof of uh, principle methodologies in this research uh, discipline. And if I have, if I have time, I could uh, talk about, more about the future directions. So topological matter has uh, nowadays formally be written into several textbooks, including, including this uh, modern condensed matter physics. And since the uh, dis discovery of quantum Hall effect, quantum topology has uh, really revolutionized our knowledge about uh, quantum matter. And uh, various of topological quantum materials has been identified and studied. And these materials often uh, features three kinds, uh, three kinds of phenomenon. The first is that they all often have topological fermions including Dirac fermion, Weyl fermion, and uh, other Carroll fermions. And the Hamiltonian of these uh, topological fermions uh, mimics that of the fundamental fermions in high, high energy physics. So that is, uh, there is a broad connection. The uh, second uh, evidence or experimental feature of these uh, materials that is that they can often have symmetry protected bulk boundary correspondence that is, that is to say that not only their bulk host this uh, on euro band structures, but uh, they could also have non-trivial surface state. So these uh, bulk boundary correspondence widely connected uh, actually most of the experimental and the theoretical uh, condensed matter techniques. The last one is that uh, if we have uh, further chemical engineering or gating for these topological materials, we can actually realize uh, quantized electronic excitations. The mostly discussed uh, quantized phenomenon is the quantum Nolis Hall effect. And uh, these quantized electronic excitations could provide um, from principal point of view to the, um, to the next generation of quantum technology and uh, provide a material source. And uh, after almost uh, 10 years of research on these uh, weakly interacting topological materials, people uh, start to look for topological materials with stronger interactions. And these materials often have additional features, including superconductivity and magnetism. And such kinds of uh, material also overlaps strongly with another uh, active field that is uh, these uh, correlated electron systems. Uh, these physics including high, te high temperature superconductivity and spintronics. And this kind of uh, strong correlated electron field uh, also more emphasize the physics of emergence. That is uh, uh, a key, uh, key uh, concept that provide more opportunities for our experimental techniques to have some unexpected uh, discoveries. On the theoretical side, there is also a clear, um, clear, clear directions that is to search for the topological order or manifold entanglement. But how to address this topological order or manifold uh, entanglement from spectroscopic point of view is still a frontier question. So phenomenologically, um, uh, how, do we, um, how do we perturb or probe this new 
can solve for quantum materials is a challenge. So uh, to my understanding, the magnetic field could really play an important role. Uh, this is, uh, for example, at a phenomenological uh, level, we can think that uh, magnetic field can strongly suppress superconductivity and uh, control the magnetism in a material. And as a fundamental point of view, we can see that the magnetic quantum magnetic flux is h over e, and uh, quantum hole conductance is e squared over h. So they are both governed by the more fundamental uh, Planck constant and elemental charge. So there must be a more deep uh, connection. On the other hand, magnetic field direction in an electronic system can often uh, introduce a Lorentz force. And this Lorentz force can further interact with the chirality of topological matter. So that also makes the direction of the field important. And then STM happens to be such a a spectroscopic technique that can detect the electronic structure of the system and can work under a strong magnetic field. It actually utilizes a quantum tunneling principle and the essential part for this principle in our uh, STM application is that uh, our DIDV signal uh, happens to be proportional to the local density of states. Here, the local means that uh, we can really use a um, special designed mechanical system to control the atomically sharp tip to scan on the surface of the sample. And uh, just below the atomically sharp tip, that is the local area that will perturb or probe the local electronic structure. And uh, uh, in our lab system, we often can have a stronger magnetic field along C axis, which is as strong as 18 Tesla for current commercial facilities. And in plane wise, we can have a five Tesla magnetic field. Now in our lab, we have a nine Tesla C axis field and a two Tesla vector magnetic field. And the STM data structure is also very straight, straightforward. Uh, it, conclude, uh, it constitutes the three parts. Uh, first, we can uh, scan the tip on the surface to uh, directly measure the surface profile of the sample. Here I use uh, cobaltin as a new uh, type of quantum material as an illustration. For this material, the STM can directly I found that the surface consists of two kinds of territories. On the upper territories, uh, if we zoom in to the atomic structure, we can find it actually formed by the Qing honeycomb lattice. And for the lower territories, we found actually it is formed by the cobalt 3 Qing 1 Kagami lattice. So this lattice geometry uh, resolving capability is uh, also a new unique feature of STM that we can uh, further perturb their respective quantum topology that we'll discuss later. And another unique STM, uh, another un unique property of uh, STM is, is that we can uh, measure the local density of states and every position on the surface. And then we can obtain the IDV map and the uh, energy of this DIDV map, uh, then we can show that the density of states for the two surfaces are dramatically different. And uh, we, we can further find that the lower territories for the Kagomi lattice, we can, in the DIDV map signal, we can find some standing uh, wave signals. And the Fourier transform of these standing waves, we can obtain the momentum space information, as we call it quasi-particle interference patterns. So the topographic image, the DV spectrum and the DV map, these three kinds of data constitute uh, the main data structure for STM. So a natural question for us in studying these materials is that how do we link the observed turning signal to the elusive quantum topology? From our experience, we mainly have three parts. Uh, in this process. First, we'll uh, document our data and compare with uh, known non-topological materials, such as uh, 
uh, simple metals or uh, to the electron gas system, then we can find some anomalies. Second, we'll systematic perturb this anomaly by magnetic field or chemical engineering or other uh, perturbations. Maybe, maybe, can, maybe you can answer a question from Ming. He, he asked, uh, what is the typical domain size of different cleave plants? Uh, it, it, can, it can be very, uh, very large. Uh, uh, here I show, uh, because, um, because the limited space, I show um, uh, small domains, but it can be very large. For example, it can be uh, 300 nanometer for a single domain cleaving surface. It can be very large indeed. Here is just uh, for the illustrative uh, point of view, I show that is a uh, um, smaller domain so that it can be vivid uh, displayed in single image. So what, what, what is the line? Why is the line like shape? Uh, you mean, uh, yeah, yeah. it's kind of, uh, um, yeah, this domain, it, it, can, it can have some anisotropy because uh, um, the crystal is like, uh, if we saw the crystal, it's also like uh, three-fold uh, anisotropic. Right, right. So it have, can have this kind of um, stripe-like structure or uh, 120 degree um, kind of uh, domains. So they are uh, equally distributed on the surface. Okay, okay. So um, then uh, with those perturbations, we can find uh, a good constraint on the interpretation of this anomaly. And the third part is that we will often uh, try to connect our STM data with other complementary techniques to get can, a comprehensive. Can I, just, uh, mm -hmm. can I ask you something? Monday? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, from STM imaging, can you, in principle, uh, assess how disordered uh, the system is? Yeah. Uh, is there mean, some systematic way to... Yeah, you mean structurally uh, disordered or electronic disordered? Uh, maybe, maybe electronically is more interesting, but uh, any... Yeah, yeah. Structurally, we can also study some defects, local defects, uh, and the atomic scale that uh, can be addressed. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, but uh, the challenge is uh, the interpretation is often um, more challenging for this uh, real but, space disordered phenomenon. Yeah. But, but is there some kind of procedure that the community accepts as a way to say whether this particular, say, semi-metal is uh, very clean or very uh, disordered? From yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, usually we can um, assess the chemi chemistry disorder by uh, saying how many um, chemical impurity, how percentage in, in terms of percentage, what is uh, chemical impurities. Um, for these quantum materials, uh, often we have less than 0.1 percentage of impurities. But uh, uh, we sometimes deliberately uh, drop some impurity, chemical impurities or chemical dopants into the system. We can also uh, realize how these uh, dopants locally affect the electronic structure. Yeah, that can be uh, discussed okay. later. Yeah, we, we can have some broad connections with other complementary techniques. For example, we can compare the STM observed local uh, integrated dense, uh, observed local density states with the momentum integrated for emission signal we can uh, compare our STM measured uh, this uh, uh, energy gap with uh, for emission measured energy gap and uh, analysis uh, an analyze its anisotropic properties, and uh, we can compare the man we, we can compare the STM measured phase transitions with magnetotransport observed phase transitions, and uh, we can compare the magnetic field response to the electronic structure with uh, transport technique. And we can also directly use dense, density functional theory to calculate the surface dependent density of states and the quasi-particle interference. And we can, sometimes we can also uh, collaborate with analytical models to uh, evaluate, for example, the symmetry breaking response to topological band structure. So for, for any uh, spectroscopic technique, or uh, one often uh, mad question is that uh, how do we obtain information from the spectroscopic data? 
uh, to my understanding, um, as an ordinary uh, human being, we, we often can obtain information from these uh, 2D, 2, 2D uh, exotic patterns and uh, 1D spectroscopic peaks. And for STM, the quasi-particle interference uh, method is a good way to uh, generate a lot of these exotic 2D patterns. And from the early research before topological material, STM has uh, established that the quasi-particle interference fundamentally roots in the defects induced uh, fragile oscill oscillation of the charge density. And uh, from a uh, Fourier transform of these oscillations, we can obtain a Q uh, vector. And this Q vector, if we look at the momentum space, it actually connect uh, different uh, K momentum. Uh, Q equals to K2 minus K1 or K1 minus K2. And uh, we often only consider uh, elastic quasi-particle interference. And uh, for the momentum analysis, we often have to considering three um, essential selection rules. Uh, for the charge part, uh, it's actually very simple to the forming golden rule. That is, uh, if we have large charge density, of course, the scattering chance is larger. For the spin, we often considering that uh, the spin reversal scattering should be forbidden, especially for the non-magnetic impurity assisted quasi-particle interference. And similar to the spin, the orthogonal, the scattering before, uh, between orthogonal orbitals should also be forbidden. So the first clear case uh, in topological material is uh, quasi-particle interference of bismuth antimony, where uh, people observe rich scattering pattern. And this can indeed directly be compared with the spin and the momentum resolved for emission. And uh, for emission signal has shown that there are actually three type of Fermi surfaces with uh, carol spin texture. And uh, if we apply the aforementioned uh, spin selection rule, then there are only three allowed scattering vectors. And indeed, these three scattering vectors are uh, observed uh, or consistent with the STM quasi-particle interference signal. So this uh, um, STM quasi-particle interference data then uh, can provide uh, evidence that this Fermi surface could indeed have carol spin texture, which is a direct manifestation of its underlying Z2 quantum topology. Later, people find simpler topological insulators uh, bismuth teronite, and uh, it has a simpler Fermi surface. Indeed, the quasi-particle interference pattern is also simpler, and this can also be directly compared with the full emission data. Uh, one key difference is that uh, people immediately can notice that uh, the uh, stronger intensity for the quasi-particle quasi interference is along the gamma m direction, while the, quasi, uh, the full emission data it has stronger intensity along gamma k direction. So this could be a direct indication that this material could also have a carol spin texture and the direct, direct back scattering uh, should be forbidden. And people further considering the warping effect of the Fermi surface and then determining that uh, the, as the STM observed scattering channel actually uh, from this tip to tip scattering. So this is also a good example that um, STM can provide evidence for the carol spin texture, which is a, a manifestation of the underlying Z2 quantum topology. And another source of information can be uh, ob obtained by observing a lot of peaks. And Landau quantization uh, happen to be such a good method that it can generate a lot of or a sequence of spectroscopic peaks. So a key um, concept for Landau quantization in topological material is a uh, um, Landau quantization of Dirac fermion. It's very different from the uh, simple Landau quantization of parabolic band in that uh, it has a zero Landau level. The energy of the zero Landau level does not shift with the magnetic field. And uh, for the higher sequence of Landau levels, it has a square root dependence on the Landau level sequence as well as the uh, uh, magnetic field strength. So in this mesalonide topological insulator, people do uh, observe this zero Landau level and subsequently identified 
the higher sequence of the Landau levels. And the, the observation of the zeroth Landau level and the fundamental uh, point of view uh, is that it, ha it have a direct consequence that if we can control the band feeding to cross the zeroth Landau level, then there uh, must have a half integer quantum Hall effect. And this half integer quantum Hall effect is indeed um, indirectly observed by later uh, transport measurement on a cousin topological insulator material. This is a chemical engineered material that it, uh, so that it, uh, its transport is dominant by the surface. And through gating the lower surface, people also observe the transport Landau level fan. And this Landau level fan also exhibits, exhibits zero Landau level. And through gating through the zero, zero Landau level, people, people can observe odd integer quantum Hall effect. So this is consistent with the scenario that both the upper and lower surface of this material feature the half integer quantum Hall effect. So people can also use the Landau level to perturb say, a prop system with broken symmetry. For example, in the crystalline insulator lead tin cyanide system, people observed three sets of zero Landau level. So this is a good evidence or indication for the scenario that this system probably uh, hosts both the massless direct fermium and massive direct fermium. So this massive direct fermium contributes to the additional two zeros Landau level. So with uh, uh, Landau level quantization and quasi-particle interference, then the STM researchers met a further challenge. That is, um, we realized that the STM uh, evaluation or probing of this topological quantum material is often fall behind the photo emission, fall behind transport, or fall behind force principle predictions. So how do we utilize our own uh, method or technology to discover a new topological phenomenon or a new topological material that has become a major challenge? So arguably we think the topological correspondence is uh, a fundamental understanding of the topological uh, theory could provide us uh, some guidelines. One of the important correspondence is the uh, bulk boundary correspondence. Uh, for example, in the early study of the quantum Hall effect, people have realized this. Uh, this is, uh, for example, in this paper, it, its title is the chain number and age states in the integer quantum Hall effect. So the chain number is a bulk topological invariant, and the age states is a boundary mode. And STM happen to, happens to be such a good technique that uh, uh, it can it can probe the uh, age states of the material clearly. For example, in bismuth and uh, lead tin cyanide and uh, tungsten cyanide, people uh, have observed very sharp or robust step age states. So these step age states, robust step step age states, provide early indication that uh, this material uh, really could have non-trivial band topology. And uh, another uh, correspondence recently uh, appreciated is uh, on Euro lattice geometry. And uh, uh, from Taliban model point of view, people start to realize that uh, on Euro fermions can naturally arise from this uh, on Euro lattices with special geometry. For example, the honeycomb lattice and the well-known example is the graphene it has a direct fermium. And recently we have some effort on the Kagumi lattice and the people also find uh, this uh, on Euro fermium in Lieb lattice and uh, other Carroll lattice system. For the Kagumi lattice, if we're considering the ne nearest neighbor hoping, then uh, a simple tight bending model will tell us that it uh, hosts a direct fermium and the Brunelian zone boundary and uh, in the meantime, we also have a flat band. So this flat band provide stronger interactions for the system. So this is a good system to have both geometry, interaction, and topology. So it's pretty much uh, similar to the um, another famous material that is a twisted barrier graphene. Essentially, 
they all have these three key elements. And, and the Kagomi lattice materials also host, host a, a variety of magnetic structures. For example, here um, we have studied and different magnetic material, um, magnetin, um, paramagnetic material, cobaltin, and uh, ferrimagnetic material, uh, terbium-166, uh, and hard ferromagnetic cobaltin sulfur, and the soft ferromagnetic iron tin system. We call it the soft magnet because uh, magnetic magnetization direction in this material can be easily manipulated by a smaller vector magnet field as small as 0.5 Tesla. Uh, this is Andrei Nevedomsky. Could yeah, I ask yeah. a quick, uh, just a quick remark? So what you said about the Kagoma lattice having a flat band is certainly true. But as you could see even from the picture you're showing that the energy of the Dirac point is not at the same position as that of the flat band. Right, so yeah. it clearly depends on the filling. For instance, if you actually want to be in a flat band regime, you want to have more than two electrons in those three bands. Whereas if you want to have a Dirac point, you want to have one electron for your chemical potential to be there. So in the examples that you're showing, the experimental examples, what is the filling of this band structure? Do you have one electrons? Do you have two? Is uh, your chemical potential the Dirac point or is it near the flat band? I, I think in, in all these um, materials, they have multi orbitals and uh, Sometimes the uh, other elements also um, have band structure in the business. So it's hard to uh, um, predict or directly say that uh, how many electrons per Kagomi lattice. It's hard to uh, have a direct uh, judgment on that. Often we have to consult with um, real experiment and uh, have to look at into the first principles calculation. It's hard for me to immediately tell that mm -hmm. how much electron. And but it, it, it usually have multi sets of this uh, Kagomi band structure, not only one sets. I think you, your question is more relevant if the material really only have one sets of this uh, Kagomi band structure. But if it has multiple sets, uh, then it's uh, hard to right. have but a clear so, sense on that. Right. I, I don't disagree with anything you said, but it's true also that it would be good to have some, you know, semi qualitative understanding. So, for instance, take oh, yeah. 310 which you're definitely going to discuss, right? Yeah. And as, as I'm sure you know, the soil is antiferromagnetically, yeah. and the main electrons at the Fermi level are those of manganese. And so in the zeroth approximation, you could say, you know what, the unit cell, forget about 10, I have one manganese per each side in a Kagoma lattice. And then, you know, it's a reasonable question to ask, well, given the valency of manganese in this compound and crystal field splittings, do I have one electron, two electrons, or three electrons in this, flat, in, in this band structure? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that this uh, uh, analog, uh, this analysis, like in ionic tides, we do have such good of uh, clear physics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think hopefully we, we should have some of this uh, discussion theoretically soon. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, for the topological Kagomi lattice system, one uh, leading question or one um, clear direction is to search for the Haldane phase or the Haldane model phase. So what is such a phase? Uh, what is such kind of phase? Um, so basically, as, as discussed uh, above, that uh, Kagomi lattice will naturally feature the uh, Dirac fermium and its Brennison boundary and with the considering outer plane magnetization and uh, strong spin orbital coupling, especially this k Mali type of uh, spin orbital capping then and the k and the k prime point there all will open a chain energy gap and surrounding the Kagomi lattice there will be a carol edge states or quantum loss hall edge states so how do we find such a Kagomi lattice material to realize such a, a chain gap, gap gap phase then we look at the uh, these materials we realize that uh, most of these Kagomi lattice material have one uh, one little problem is that uh, in, in the center of the Kagomi lattice, there is additional tin atom. So that could uh, um, affect the ideal Kagomi lattice hoping as in the Tadabani model. Then we find that uh, uh, this rare earth 166 system 
is a good candidate in that the rare earths have a stronger chemical pressure that can push this um, tin atom out of the Kagami plane. So it uh, features a pristine Kagami lattice. So that could be a good candidate. And then we further found the uh, rare earth 166 system has a variety of magnetic structures depending on rare earth element. And uniquely, the turbine 166 have an outer plane magnetization. And this matches with the um, original theoretical requirement or prediction to have with the Chen quantum phase. And then we first studied this uh, turbine 166 system and our STM um, data do find the Kagami lattice and it is very, uh, very clean. And for very large of area, we do not find any, uh, any defects or impurities. And uh, through applying a magnetic field, we can uh, observe uh, the clear Landau quantization in this magnet. Uh, it's uh, uh, important to say that uh, uh, before the, um, this material, people actually do not find a magnet that uh, features Landau quantization in scanning tuning experiment. So this is really very rare to observe. And on the surfaces without Kagami lattice, uh, we also do not find uh, Landau quantization for uh, this uh, 166 material because there are other uh, cleaning surfaces like uh, turbine combinations. So this quantization is induced by the, uh, by the field from turbine? Um, no, by the external magnetic field. Oh, by external magnetic field. Yeah, okay. as a function of field, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, then we can, then we can analyze this Landau fans and we find that it actually features a uh, Dirac fermium with a Chen energy gap. And it's a fully polarized Dirac fermium and uh, oh, we can utilize a simple um, analytical model to describe our Landau fan data. And uh, it is find that uh, there is a large Chen energy gap as large as 34 millivolts. And uh, because we have so many peaks, we can uh, easily extract the velocity, direct velocity and direct energy. And this, uh, with these parameters, we can inverse, uh, inversely plot the band dispersion in the momentum space to compare with uh, our first principle calculations. And uh, it, we find a very good match. And the turning data has a similar dispersion with uh, first principle calculations, also have a churn energy gap. And within- okay. Sorry, I have a super quick experimental question. Is there an obvious reason why the features all seem to get quite broad as you go as you get to larger positive biases? Yeah, there's a apparent reason that uh, the lifetime uh, will go decay uh, uh, and higher energy. I see. Uh, the f simple electron electron interaction will get a uh, self energy correction for the lifetime proportional to E square. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and um, within the chain gap, uh, we found, we also studied the step edge states for the Kagami lattice. And we find, um, so we measured many layers and there, uh, here we show a seven representative layer. And only at the chain energy gap, we find there exists a robust edge states. So this is a good indication that uh, there indeed can exist a uh, chain uh, carol edge states. And we also, Finally, we also judge that uh, since it has a chain energy gap, then we can evaluate the baby curvature contribution to the uh, anomalous hole conductivity. And we, through our STM data, we can calculate the conductivity to be a point 13 uh, quantum hole. And our transport uh, collaborators also systematically measure the uh, temperature scaling of the bulk anomalous hole conductivity and then derive the intrinsic by the curvature contribution to be 0.14. So it's uh, very close to our STM derived value. So the bar char characterization, uh, boundary characterization and the uh, curvature connection together provide um, evidence for the existence of chain quantum phase in this material. We also have other uh, complementary supporting. For example, we image the uh, edge states scattering and we found indeed uh, the, within the chain energy gap, the quasi-particle scattering 
for the age is uh, strongly suppressed. So this is uh, consistent with the casual nature of the uh, age states. So they don't scatter. And we also have full emission connection and uh, some transport evidence for the for the 2D nature of the Fermi surface and uh, some additional first principle evaluation of the chain quantum nature. And another unique feature for SKM is to perform spectroscopic measurement under a vector magnetic field. So that uh, full emission cannot do this because um, the detection of full emission uh, cannot be uh, performed under a magnetic field. And the early um, vector field STM is uh, done in a uh, niobium disalinide superconducting system to uh, study the inclined vortex lattice uh, symmetry. And here we further apply or extend this technique to uh, study a strongly, a stronger correlated system lithium iron arsenic with um, higher temp uh, superending temperature. And uh, we do find that uh, if we increase a C axis magnetic field, there can be a hexagonal to quasi square vortex lattice transition. And if we um, tilting a two, two Tesla magnetic field toward in plane direction, there can be a systematic uh, elliptical distortion of the hexagonal vortex lattice. So this uh, um, systematic vortex lattice, trim, uh, vortex lattice symmetry manipulation allow us to uh, further recalibrate our uh, vector field STM system. Then with this calibrated system, we studied a uh, soft magnet iron tin uh, system. This, uh, for this material, its spontaneous magnetization direction is along uh, in plane. And uh, we found the Kagumi lattice of this system exhibit a special quantum state. And uh, this special quantum state has enormous magnetic field response. If we apply a C axis magnetic field, then we find this quantum state first have a large energy shift, then saturate around um, 12 millivolts. So this is actually a large energy sh shift uh, because uh, for example, if we calculate the energy shift between zero and one Tesla, we can get the effective G factor uh, over 200. And if we, uh, then we further found that uh, this uh, saturation behavior actually mimics the bulk magnetization behavior for the C-axis magnetic field. They both saturate and one Tesla. So then we judge that probably this energy shift behavior is caused by the magnetization direction um, perturbation to the electronic band structure. Then we further rotate an in-plane magnetic field. For the 1T magnetic field, we rotate in-plane, then we find the energy further, uh, this quantum state further have a two-fold energy shift. So we judge this material could really have uh, in-plane pneumaticity. This is indeed later on uh, confirmed by our transport measurement for the existence of electronic pneumaticity. For STM technique, we can also study the quasi-particle interference to resolving the scattering geometry. And then we find without applying any magnetic field, the spontaneous quasi-particle interference indeed shows uh, in surge, surge in pneumaticity along the same A-axis as the uh, pneumaticity mentioned before, they are similar. And then if we apply a small magnetic field along C-axis, this pneumaticity uh, disappear and we recovered the six-fold symmetry similar to the crystalline symmetry. If we further rotate the magnetic field in plane and we found the quasi-particle interference near the small Q vector, actually this pneumaticity or anisotropy follows the direction of the magnetic field. So this is a good- So, so, so what, what is the magnetic structure of the system? The ferromagnet or? Yeah, it's partially ferromagnet and have some, uh, it's a soft ferromagnet. So, 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 so in, in between the layer, it's also, it's anti-ferromagnetic or ferromagnet? I know ferromagnetic. Oh, so it's a really soft ferromagnet. Yeah, it's a soft ferromagnet. So, so then, so, then you just simply follow the field direction then, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the magnetic direction follows the field direction. So uh, what, is your as, what is your pneumatic direction? Uh, along A-axis, crystalline A-axis. 
the, the pneumaticity um, is hard to say here because it is entangled with uh, uh, spin uh, pneumaticity. But uh, we have an argument that if we, no matter uh, at which field direction, if we withdraw the field to zero Tesla, then we uh, remeasure the quasi particle interference. It always uh, go back to the original pneumaticity direction. So, so the spin direct, there is a preferred A axis for the spontaneous magnetization. Um, so that is our definition from spin point of view, the pneumaticity. So there must be some structural electronic um, to pin the spin to that special A axis. But, but that I, mean, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you claimed the system is actually uh, and there's no, I mean, there's no preferred direction, right? I mean, if you rotate 90 degrees, it's, it's, it's the same, right? If you if we crystally crystal structure is the same, it has a six fold or three fold um, symmetry. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the electronically it breaks that symmetry, break the six fold to uh, two fold. Mm -hmm. That's very strange. I mean, there has to be yeah. some underlying reason. Right? I mean, what's the underlying reason in this case? Um, I think it's similar to um, to to the uh, bismuth or other correlated iron nitride system. It always have this uh, lattice or uh, lattice and uh, mm -hmm. but in, lattice and spin tangled. Yeah, in bismuth and also in YBCO, also in the uh, nectite. I mean, the, the structure itself is an isotropic, right? If you mm. really claim the structure is isotropic, it's very hard for me to believe. You know, you have a preferred direction electronically, right? I mean, it doesn't mm. doesn't it doesn't does not obey the uh, block theorem, right? You have you have yeah. this periodic rotation. Yeah, so I guess you you don't know. I mean, so there has to be some yeah. structural distortion you have not found. Yeah, well, I think it should go along with uh, some structural distortion. But, but uh, uh, no one seems to have really carefully measured the structure. So this is this is this is a cobalt tin, cobalt three tin two. Or? Iron tin. Uh, uh, iron three tin two. Yeah. I see. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and and we also consulted with uh, some uh, theoretical collaborations, and they uh, find that uh, if we assume the um, the orbital or spin texture for this. Um, material have a um, carol spin texture, then uh, they could, uh, in principle, explain why the scattering geometry follows the uh, magnetic field direction. But I thought, I thought so, you just claimed it's a furrow magnet, right? How can it be chiral if it's a furrow uh, magnet? But it, it's, it's like the Dirac dispersion, it, it should have some orbital um, orbital texture. It should still have, a, even it's a ferromagnet, uh, ferromagnetic, it still can have some um, carol spin texture, carol orbital or spin texture. Hmm. I mean, is there evidence? I mean, spectroscopy evidence for the canted spin, like you Yeah, found? yeah, the neutron scattering. Yeah, for, okay, uh, for so it's, it's a canted ferromagnet, not a ferromagnet. Or? It's a ferromagnet, but it has an auto planar uh, spin texture. Okay. So it so has an additional it's feature. Yeah, it's okay. overall is a uh, soft okay. ferromagnet, but uh, so, so it's a canted ferromagnet basically. Yeah. Uh, small canted. Yeah, it's a small uh, texture secondary order. The first order is a um, soft magnet, mm -hmm. ferromagnet, but uh, the secondary order, there are some small features. So, so in some ways, um, in summary, we, our energy shift re reveals that there is, um, electronically, there is a nodal direction. In nodal means no matter how we apply field along the E-axis, uh, there are no um, var any variation. So we think the spontaneous magnetization probably uh, is along A axis. And then um, our spontaneous quasi-particle interference also seems to agree with this, that uh, there is um, A axis pneumaticity. And if we apply a few to other directions, uh, we can manipulate uh, the scattering geometry in this material. So through quasi-particle dispersion an analysis, we find that's, that uh, um, this enormous quantum state could be associated with uh, uh, band a, Dirac, a massive Dirac band, and it's associated with the upper uh, branch of the massive Dirac band. So the energy uh, variation is caused by the post caused by the magnetization direction controlled uh, Dirac gap or Dirac mass. So that is the uh, source for the energy shift and anomalous behavior. But but it's still um, not well understood because. Um, it seems the first principle calculation is not uh, working very well in this material. So um, we're still still trying to understand why this uh, so many anomalous behaviors. And uh, we further studied a hard ferromagnet cobaltine sulfur uh, material. 
So uh, for this material, uh, it has uh, two kinds of cleaning surfaces. One is the sulfur surface and uh, the other is the tin surface. But the uh, key challenge for our STM is that these two kinds of surface have exactly the same lattice symmetry and lattice constant. So how do we distinguish these two kinds of surface is a, a major challenge for our STM. So here we use um, first use crystalline symmetry to do such a uh, surface uh, assignment. We find if we, based on crystalline symmetry, if we, the tin and the sulfur meet at an uh, atomic step edge, then there must be such a case that the tin surface is above the sulfur surface. There is no other, uh, the other choice. And we indeed find a, uh, a lot of such mono step edges on the layer step edge, and uh, then we can identify that the surface with vacancies should be tin, and the surface with add atoms should be um, sulfur. And uh, indeed, in these two surfaces, we observe uh, distinguished uh, density of states, uh, local density of states signals, and uh, this can be uh, shown to be agree with the first principle calculations. And uh, Later on, a puzzle to me is that a later on science paper for the same material seem to have a different surface identification scenario, opposite surface identification scenario with our earlier work. And then we designed a new experiment to use 100 indium dopants to further to selective dop this material because indium is known to dop into the tin layer, but not the surfer uh, from the chemistry point of view. And then indeed, on the vacancy, vacancy surface, which is identified as tin, we observe almost 100 percentage, of, sorry, one percentage of the impurities. So it's uh, consistent with the nominal doping and further confirm our identification. Then uh, electronically, the first puzzle is where does this peak uh, come from? from the sulfur surface. And since we also have a good first principle calculation, we first look at the calculation and it is fine that this peak come from a Kagumi lattice flat band. And this flat band and the branding zone center is in touch with the parabolic band. If we further considering spin over the coupling, there could open a very small energy gap. And this is indeed have a very good connection with the fundamental model of Kagumi lattice, meaning that uh, without spin over the coupling, we have a very good band touching of the flat band with the parabolic band and the gamma point. And if we considering spin over the coupling and ferromagnetism, there could open a chain energy gap. So then we uh, use our experiment to uh, systematically study the flat band peak and its response to external magnetic field. And we find no matter we add a positive or negative magnetic field, they always have a non energy shift. Actually, it also always shift to the positive energy. If we um, analysis the energy shift rate, we find that it corresponds to an effective magnetic moment of minus three mu b. So this minus three mu b is a, actually a enormous number because in our first principle calculation, it actually come from a spin up band. So it should have a spin contribution of plus one mu b. However, um, we observed a negative th uh, three mu b, then we judge probably this come from the orbital mechanism of this material. And indeed, uh, from the tight bonding point of view, since there is a chain energy gap, so there must be a, there must be a very curvature induced orbital mechanism. Uh, there is a lot of early discussion of this very curvature induced orbital mechanism. And so actually a well-known uh, theoretical phenomenon. And this, uh, indeed we use first principle calculation to directly calculate the orbital mechanism of the flat band. And we do find that it features a negative mechanism and uh, its magnitude is also uh, similar to our experimental range. So this is a good indication that uh, this material features an, um, flat band and negative orbital mechanism. Actually, uh, the flat band orbital mechanism is uh, similarly observed recently in twisted bilayer graphene, and it can further introduce 
uh, quantum loss Hall effect because uh, that structure is much more cleaner. But fundamentally, um, the physics are similar. Uh, yeah, both co uh, come from the uh, fabric curvature induced ob orbital magnetism. And finally, uh, STM is a very powerful technique to study the extremely local effect, for example, uh, in high temperature superconductor bismuth uh, 2212, people find non-magnetic zinc impurity can actually introduce a very sharp resonance. And uh, the resonance real space pattern resembles uh, the D wave uh, pairing symmetry. For uh, topological magnet, we also find that the non-magnetic impurity uh, indium also can introduce a very sharp resonance locally. And this resonance from a first principle calculation point of view is actually from a spin down resonance because uh, and the spin down channel, there is a fully open energy gap and uh, this gap protect this resonance to be very sharp. So how do we uh, demonstrate that uh, this resonance has a spin down feature by experiment? Then we designed a spin polarized uh, STM experiment. The key is to uh, separately control the magnetic tip and the uh, magnetization of the sample. So we choose a soft magnet tip, nickel. It, uh, its critical field is uh, much less than 0.1 Tesla. And the sample has a critical uh, flipping field of 0.2 to 0.3 Tesla. So first we use a stronger magnetic field 0.5 Tesla to polarize both the tip and the sample. And then we slightly reduce the field and then slightly flip the field to minus one Tesla. And at this point, the spin of the spin direction of the tip get, uh, get flipped, but the magnetization of the sample remains the same. Then we observe an enhancement of the resonance. We further reversely enhance the field to minus 0.5 Tesla. And then at this point, the magnetization direction of the sample also get flipped. So both the tip and the sample uh, get flipped. Then we recovered the previous uh, um, scenario that the uh, signal dropped again. So through this systematic manipulation, we can demonstrate that this uh, resonance state indeed features a uh, spin down feature. Uh, spin down feature. And uh, we also can study how um, two or three impurity can interact with each other. And for the two impurities, we find they simply split into two quantum state. And for three impurities, they can uh, split into three uh, separate quantum state. For the two quantum state, if we image and the respective energies, we can observe that they act, these two states actually form bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. And for the triple impurity, it's similar that they form one bonding orbital and two uh, anti-bonding molecular orbital. And for the triple impurity, it's actually indeed a special case because from group symmetry point of view, it actually have three uh, mirror symmetry. So it's anti-bonding orbital uh, should be degenerate. This is also captured by our first principle calculation that we have a degenerate anti-bonding orbital state. But uh, why in experiment we observe uh, the splitting, additional splitting of the anti-bonding orbital? So that can be understand that uh, this material have both ferromagnetism and spin orbital coupling and the ferromagnetism um, and the mirror operation of the spin actually should uh, flip the spin. But this is inconsistent uh, with the ferromagnetism nature of the material. So then there must be uh, energy splitting. So this energy splitting is actually very similar to the previous mentioned chain energy gap. So it has uh, two essential ingredients, ferromagnetism and spin orbital coupling. So this is a effectively a zero dimension chain energy gap, although you don't, you don't have exotic bulk boundary correspondence. Finally, um, for the uh, extreme local effect, a clear direction in topological superconducting material is to search for the topological zero mode. 
So there has been um, very good uh, demonstrations of this in artificial hybrid systems like uh, uh, 2D heater structures or 1D chain, 1D hinge system. I'm not, not going to uh, discuss in detail, but uh, I would like to uh, mention another uh, useful direction is to use STM to look at the naturally born topological zero mode. For example, in this um, lattice um, ion, in this ion satellite terminate system, we find this material could have uh, this interstitial ion impurities and uh, precisely at the impurity, there could be a robust zero energy state. The robustness of this zero energy state is demonstrated by the magnetic field perturbation in that no matter how uh, we add the magnetic field, they just uh, stay there, do not split or shift. And uh, conventionally, you, conventionally uh, our quantum theory tell us that uh, there could not be a stable zero energy state. So that is uh, from previous textbook. But nowadays, uh, we know the Barry phase theory and the uh, quantum uh, topological theory, they uh, tell us that if the system have a Barry phase, then it can actually tolerate robust zero energy state. So the observation uh, of this robust zero energy state at that time uh, informed us that this material could really have a non-trivial Barry phase effect or topological band structure. And indeed, our uh, theoretical collaborators do find that uh, through first principle calculation, they find that this uh, ion titanide satellite system do have um, non-trivial Z2 quantum topology. And people also discussed why the uh, zero energy state, uh, the, the zero energy state or topological zero mode can be introduced by the single atomic quantum impurities. Now recently we also uh, try to deposit ion at atom um, lithium ion arsenic, which is also theoretically predicted to be a V2 um, topological superconductor. And for this material, if we deposit the ion atom to sit just above the four surface atoms in the center of the four surface atoms, then we can also observe a robust zero energy state. And this zero energy state does not split by the vector magnetic field we applied. And another uh, interesting recent experiment is uh, in uh, the film of iron satellite, tyranide, iron satellite tyranide system. People find there can be this um, native line vacancies. And at the ends of the vacancies, people also observed robust zero energy state. They are also good candidate for the topological zero mode. Uh, on the other direction, uh, the original theoretical prediction is that uh, if the material have carol superconductivity uh, inside the vortex core, there naturally uh, can be topological zero mode or Majorana zero mode. There are also very uh, interesting discussion and demonstrations. I, I saw in kind of agree experiment, they, they claim that the, the, the zero mode, it was not exactly a zero, right? Or something, right? Is it through STM? Um, they, they, clari they clarified that uh, um, partially uh, like uh, the zero, exactly zero mode indeed observed and uh, small magnetic field is uh, within zero resolution is zero, but uh, the portion of the ho uh, vortices hosting zero mode decreases dramatically with increasing magnetic field, mm -hmm. uh, probably due to their interference or uh, whatever effects. But uh, and a smaller magnetic field, when the vortex are uh, separate with, uh, well with each other, they, they do claim that uh, there can be a robust zero energy mode, exactly zero uh, within their resolution. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, this is a very old uh, work that uh, at that time I, uh, we get a lot of samples from Professor Dai's group. And we actually spent uh, uh, several years trying to cleaving this uh, sample to uh, try to address one of the key questions in iron based superconductivity is that uh, what is the role of anions? Because um, all these iron based superconductors 
seem to not only have iron, but have um, uh, anion, iron, anion, um, key, uh, this is a tetragonal structure. So the role of anion is, uh, although uh, well appreciated by the crystal uh, structure, but uh, its electronic role is uh, less discussed because um, spectroscopically, the p orbitals of anions often exist at higher energies and whether they can play a leading role in the pairing is not well known experimentally. So here we study two kinds of quantum impurities. One is the uh, arsenic vacancies, um, arsenic surface. So locally we break this, um, this iron, uh, iron anion coupling. And the other is uh, kind of impurities on the iron terminations. We do uh, have some chance to observe that there are um, uh, arsenic dimers on the surface. So locally, and each of these dimers, the, we can recover the iron anion uh, tetragonal structure. So these, these two are complementary to each other. And we, on the iron surface, we can also manipulate the arsenic uh, atom. For example, we extract from the dimer rule and place on the surface to form uh, such a pattern. On the, ion, uh, on the arsenic surface, we do observe well-defined uh, uh, gap structures similar to other uh, experiment, uh, experimental techniques like uh, photo emission. And, uh, and the center of the arsenic vacancy, we find the superconducting coherence is strongly suppressed and there emerges uh, new sets of in-gap, uh, apparent in-gap states. So this actually is a good example of the uh, impurity induced power breaking effect uh, is similar to other experiments for the impurity study. And on the iron surface, when the upper uh, arsenic layer is peeled off and we observe uh, the surrounding gap structure is strongly suppressed. It's actually uh, similar to the pseudo gap structure in cuprates. And uh, the gap bottom is also much higher and the uh, strange thing is that when we put, um, we put a dim arsenic dimer on top and then we found the superhandling coherence can uh, brought back, uh, brought, be brought back to some uh, extent. And the gap is also much deeper. So this is actually a reversed pair breaking effect. And we call it a pair recovery effect. This is a good demonstration that the arsenic may be uh, very important to the Cooper pairing and its, um, its uh, impact is very local. And from first principle uh, point of view, uh, we know that uh, the arsenic actually uh, mediate the electron hopping between next and nearest neighbor uh, iron. So this is um, our starting point for, to address the role of ars uh, arsenic in our model. Basically we try to model it by uh, thinking it's, uh, it's a hoping impurity. And then we're considering the well, uh, widely discussed as plus minus parent symmetry. And the key thing of this uh, gap function of as plus minus is that the Fourier transform of this gap function in real space happens to be the case that it's um, next nearest neighbor pairing. So it's, there is a geometrical match between the arsenic immediately hoping and the local pairing interaction. So this actually could be very essential to explain our experiments. And we find if we are carefully considering these two effects, we indeed can reproduce the results, uh, including the pair breaking effect and the pair recovery effect, showing the very local impact on the Cooper pairing. So finally, my time is out. So I um, quote Phil Anderson's uh, last words, uh, he, this probably is his um, last public talk in Princeton. At that time, I asked him, what's your best suggestion to young researchers when they encounter a new phenomenon? And Anderson's answer is patience, and it can take a lifetime long. And that to me is a very good measurement of new, and depending on how long it can be understood. Thank you. Yeah, very, very nice talk, yeah. Okay, so uh, any, any questions for him?
Yeah, you know, maybe I can ask. So yeah, yeah. Maybe you said that. Uh, so on these uh, Kagame systems, is there any STM evidence for these flat band features? Uh, yeah, well, we think uh, the this peak, this uh, sulfur peak in cobaltine sulfur could could be a good candidate for the flat band peak, because uh, from the first mm -hmm. principle calculation, we we do have such kind of flat band mimic the tight bending model and uh, its magnetization, um, optical magnetism, magnetic feature is consistent with the uh, first principle calculation. It's a spin um, negative magnetism opposite to the spin. So that uh, is a- So what, what energy is, is that? Uh, it's yeah. at minus eight millivolts. Yeah. That, that's very low, right? Compared with your tight bending calculation. I mean, I guess you don't know. I mean, is that, how does that compare with the calculation for, for this class of material? Uh, for cobaltine sulfur, it actually can be relatively uh, well described by the first principle calculation. Uh, people also have photo emission correspondence. Uh, our density states calculation also uh, looks uh, good. This is actually very hard to be such a good correspondent. Usually we have correlation. We, we don't have such good uh, first principle connection. Mm -hmm. And our past has been done in this yeah, yeah. to... Yeah. For emission, maybe uh, they want to address uh, while on this, uh, but unfortunately, I think our STM technique is not a good technique to address the KZ uh, physics because that, that the while requires KZ. So I never talk about while uh, in this material. Thank you. Can I just follow up? So, um, yeah. the, so if this is spin split flat band, do you see the other one, the spin minority band flat band? No, no, it's and high, uh, it's man, uh, and high energy, the, the much higher energy. For this energy, uh, the STM, uh, the first principle calculation has shown it's uh, fully polarized. It's a half metal. But uh, you, you are right, there, there should be another uh, set of uh, spin down, uh, spin up band. But, but unfortunately, our STM is only sensitive to uh, bands within plus minus 100 millivolts. Because on high energy, we, we got a uh, lifetime issue to resolve it, unlike for emission. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Um, can I ask a quick question? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, regarding the cleaving of surfaces, it's actually super cool to be able to resolve um, two different atom surfaces. Uh, I can I can guess. Oh, maybe I should show my video. Oh, so this is Sanyu. Um, so in theory, you can resolve whether the uh, certain wave function comes from which atom. Right? Now, uh, I was just thinking that by peeling different atoms, usually the uh, surface fermi level changes greatly. Um, so I, I'm a bit surprised that the superconductivity gap is still there. Uh, do, is it a concern? Um, I, I think you are right. Is that there, um, the so usually, we, if we compare with the high temperature cleaving, their um, surface uh, is even more um, more destroyed. But uh, we cleave, and uh, this is a technical issue. We, we really cleave at 30 Kelvin or lower. So, so its surface is uh, protected. But uh, for this material, indeed, we find um, almost the 75 percent, 75 percent. Uh, disorder. So the surface uh, upon cleaving is strongly destroyed, and only partially they, they are atomically clean. So we only uh, study this uh, atomically clean surface. So have so, you look at the have you look at the way over dope side? I mean, say for example, you know, potassium iron arsenic to see whether there's also this electronic pneumatic phase people have been claiming. Um, I didn't, but uh, Shuhan did uh, recently uh, look at the potassium, pure potassium iron arsenic. Mm -hmm. well, he, he didn't. He uh, didn't show pneumaticity. It did not show pneumaticity. No. Okay. Different from the claim that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any 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 other question for for uh, Jashin? Oh, okay. So, so yeah. So, thanks a lot. So, I want to chat with you a little bit. I mean, maybe, maybe we can chat. I'll, I'll send you an email. We can chat separately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So, thank you very much for the very nice talk. Yeah. Thank you. Now, let's let's uh, give a hand. <laughs> yeah. Next time we thank should you. invite you to come here to visit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Okay.
拜。多，我跟住要聊嘢，拜。